And we are back with the killer part of the video and we are going to take a look at the killer. Are you ready, Falcon? Let's go. Oh, look! Look, Vittorio there! Look, ne next to you, uh, Yoichi. Yeah, yeah, you're right, bro. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's laying there like some kind of Roman god or something. You know, like uh, one of those Roman statues. Yeah. Like a statue of Michelangelo. Or, uh, or uh, Leonardo da Vinci's Adam. <laughs> oh man. I told you he's an Italian stallion. Okay, let's take a look at the killer. Are you ready? Yes. Hi, Wesker. Uh, you know, Wesker is not, uh, yeah, uh, you know, he, he stopped being the new killer now. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but at least he's S tier. Okay, it is, bro. Yeah, at, yeah. Least, at least he's S tier. And, uh, you know, I think uh, he will still be played a lot. Yep. We see him a lot. Uh, let's see. Where is the new killer? Oh, here he, here he is. The knight. Okay. He's between Myers and the Hunters. Yeah, as always. Yeah. Uh, so now he has to talk to Mike, but Mike doesn't talk. Oh, okay. Yeah, he doesn't talk. He talks. Yeah. <laughs> and he does. And the only thing that Mike does is. He only breathes. Okay, now let's see how he looks. <laughs> wow. Now this is an awesome design. Yeah, and also I see, bro, the three standards for. Yeah, for his uh, guards. Exactly. Yeah. I must say this armor is very Dark Souls-esque. It is, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can... Uh, yeah, this killer uh, is... Uh, you know, the theme of this killer is related uh, to games like uh, For Honor, for, for example, or uh, so Dark Souls, as yeah. you said. Yeah. It can also be Warhammer Fantasy. I would say, because he looks like uh, some kind of uh, chaos champion. Or uh, one of the undead faction, like the vampire lords. Or the vampire counts, I mean. He... Because he has... Yeah, he has a lot of things that are going for him. A small cape. It used to be longer. I hope he gets his... I hope he gets his skin. With a longer cape, you know? I would like that, a longer cape. His hair is coming out of his helmet. But it must be pretty hard to see in it. Really? The helmet is really unique, but I really wonder how his face looks like, you know? And he's using a two-handed yeah, sword? I guess, uh, I guess we will never know, bro. <laughs> Just like the uh, trapper. Yeah. yeah, but the trapper, you can yeah. see his face. Trapper, you yeah. can see his face. Just a bit. Uh, especially if you, if you have certain masks, for example. Like this. Yeah, Trapper has uh, more of this in that case. But yeah, the sword is really nice. This nice heavy two-handed sword. And yeah, what, can, what else can I say? It is he's he's stereotypical Dark Souls knight, and he has a unique pose compared to all the other killers. There 
um, scary. Nice detail in the in some of the armor parts. I like the design. Let me say that. Do you have anything to say, bro? I think. Uh, yeah, bro. You know, I like it because uh, uh, I think uh, we were missing uh, a night killer in this game. Yeah. So, you know, I'm happy for this uh, new addition. I think what we now need uh, still are uh, is like a pirate and an and a World War II uh, style killer. Yeah. Yeah. Those uh, and but the la and but the last one I don't think that we will get the World War II style uh, killer. Even though I think they should make a so type of killer, you know. I also think that we need a an, uh, an killer of um, a priest type, a priest uh, style killer also, like a priest or a bishop or something, because it's uh, teams like this are they they need a lot of representation, especially uh, for the fact that in movies. You don't have often uh, medieval style horror movies, or you don't have like, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, movies like uh, where uh, the plague belongs to. And yes, the plague is a priestess, but I'm talking about uh, modern day, uh, like uh, like a Catholic priest or a uh, Christian priest, those type of priests. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because those were. All th because there are versions that really did a lot of taboo things, and I think that needs some uh, representation also. But like like with the only the only uh, represent the type of horror that's also not done uh, a lot, and that's horrors with the uh, only and such. If, if if we for example would get a Danish or a Scandinavian uh, killer, I would like I would like it if they base it on the on a troll. <laughs> For example, that would be cool uh, to see. But I think that would be a, that would be a video for another time. So, bro, are you ready to look at the perks? Let's go. Tar horse Kofax. That's Hungarian. Mm, maybe. Definitely not Italian. <laughs> no, he, no, he's hung Hungarian. But he did go to Italy. True, true. He was headed for Italy. So, yeah. So, I think... I think he's a Hungarian that went to... Uh, I'm not going to read this, because if I keep reading this, that is uh, going to be... Uh, <laughs> then I will be reading here for uh, ages. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, start with power. Gardia Campagnia. Compagnia. Okay. Uh, okay. Bro, I think uh, it has an Italian spelling. I think. No, then you say it. Yeah, in Italian you say uh, it's a bit difficult for uh, foreign people, I know, but uh, in, uh, in Italy we say Guardia Compagnia. Compagnia. Yeah, it's difficult because uh, uh, you know uh, the the sound of G N. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, peculiar to Italian language. English uh, doesn't have the near sound. Ah, I see. That's why it's difficult for uh, for yeah for English people. Ah, okay. Yeah. So let's see. The knight, alone, is a terrifying monster on the battlefield. But with his loyal guards, he is nearly unstoppable. Together, the, the, guardi, the Guardia Compagna fights for their own freedom, killing anyone who gets in the way. Okay. 
Uh, no, that, that, there we go. Eh? Special ability Guard Summon. Tap the power button to activate Guard Summon mode. Once activated, move around to create a portal a patrol pad. Well, in Guard Summon mode, you can aim at a generator in progress, a dunk pallet, or a breakable wall. And tap the attack button. This will summon a guard to complete a break action. On the selected object, you can also tap the power button or drain the power couch completely to end the guard summon mode. This will summon a guard who will follow and patrol the created path. There are three guards that are summoned in the same order each time. The Carnifex, who can break or damage objects faster. The Assassin, who moves faster during the hunt. And the jailer who patrols, the, uh, who patrols longer and is better at detection. So... Okay, this is a complex power. It is, bro. <laughs> so, uh, let's, le le let's keep it... Uh, we, we're gonna read the entire part, including the hunt. And then we will talk about each of the cards and we will talk about uh, the power itself. This would take long, so uh, guys, grab your popcorn, grab your drinks, go to the bathroom, you know, go to the toilet. Uh, we will be we will be sitting here for a while. Guard special ability: the hunt. While a guard is patrolling, he can spot and detect survivors. If a survivor is detected, the guard will move to the location, leave a standard on the ground, and start hunting the survivor for a set amount of time. The survivor can escape a guard by unhooking another survivor, grabbing the standard, or surviving until the hunt timer ends. If the survivor is successfully attacked by the guard or the knight, the guard will disappear. When a guard downs a survivor, the knight receives a killer instinct notification. Okay. So now that we have done that, first of all, I'm going to say, this killer scream strategy. This is all about strategy with this killer. What do you think? Uh, yeah, you are right, bro. It's, uh, yeah, you know, some killers have a setup time, you know? Yeah. But uh, this killer also needs, uh, you know, a good setup, I think, uh, while uh, you are in chase, for example. Yeah. Or uh, when you need to patrol or, you know, get rid of some object. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking about uh, generators and the pallets. Uh, yeah. The, mainly, uh, yeah. yeah. He, he is set up heavy, but the problem is, if he's in chase, it doesn't work because you don't see the survivors. It is, it's. it's yeah, that's that's the first problem. Yeah. The second problem is the, the reaction time of the guardians. Yeah. And but that is something that we will talk about later because we first talk about how the entire power and all. Because characters that have a power like this, you know, in any game, can be extremely fun or very interesting. Or uh, can have a really high skill level to play. You know? You can do a lot of things. One of those characters I think is Asi from League of Legends. Who also has something like this. But the problem is... It doesn't work in a game like Dead by Daylight. Well, it would work. Of course. But the way how he is designed doesn't allow him to work that way. He is too... Um, Restricted, if you understand what I mean. He has too many restrictions. Because, first of all, you put down the guard. By the time that you put down the guard, the survivor will already have run towards another uh, loop. Or, is, uh, or went to another uh, area. You know? Because the survivor will see, okay, he is crouched, he is uh, kneeling and he is uh, getting his guards up. So I'm going to go to a different area. 
because you don't see the survivor, correct? Uh, yeah, so yeah, basically it's uh, the same problem uh, of the artist, bro. Yeah. Because uh, remember, when you are going to put a crow, uh, when you play the artist, the survivor will just change the look. Yeah. And the only thing the artists have going for her is the fact that that, that her uh, that the hitbox of her crows are so ridiculously uh, inconsistent. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that's why. You know, okay. The idea behind this power is cool, but uh, it needs some buffs, in my opinion. Yeah. Because <laughs> how am I? So yeah. And, and the worst thing is also, everything is random, you know? You don't have any uh, control over which character is next. If you use one character, and you come at a situation where that character is better at... Yeah, yeah, basically the problem is that with that uh, sentence, bro, basically, you see, the same order each time. Yep. Yeah. So, you can't select which guard you need in that moment. Yeah, which removes a lot of strategy and a lot of skill. Yeah, level. yeah. and also we, we tried and saw that uh, the, the survivor uh, has a notification about uh, uh, the guard you are going to summon. Yep. So, he knows uh, if you are going to unleash uh, Carnifex, uh, for example, or the Jailer, yep. you know. It's it, it's basically, uh, yeah, like, um, if I would see any of those, I would be like, okay, uh, if, if I would see Carnifex, I would be like, okay, don't drop a pallet, because he's most likely going to use Carnifex to destroy the pallet, you know, then I will have less time to uh, run away, and if, he's u and if he's using the Jailer, I would be like, oh, it is just the Jailer, I just have to outrun the Jailer, and I'm, f and I'm fine. It's it's really weird and inconsistent. This like uh, yeah, it, this power is really inconsistent, and this will really put him in like the top top three weakest killers in the game. This one, but let's talk about the guards because I think those are the most interesting objects of uh, the entirety uh, of the of his power. So the first uh, guard that we are going to talk about is Carnifex. Carnifex is big, he is strong, he is like, yeah. Carnifex is like, he can break a pallet in one second. It's like, I think it is faster than the killer with brutal strength. Uh, yeah, I think so. Basically, uh, with Carnifex we have a built-in brutal strength. Yeah. And also, yeah, you c while Carnifex is breaking the pallet, uh, you can move freely. Yeah. As uh, you know, as the killer. So it it has. Uh, yeah, I think he has a very good uh, zoning uh, ability. Yeah. Because uh, at that point, okay, the survivor can leave the loop, but uh, you are free to to move. Yeah. And if so you can, uh, yeah, so you can catch, uh, uh, you can still catch the survivor. Yeah, so for example, if you are uh, going, uh, ch if you are chasing the survivor and there is a breakable wall uh, close by, you can quickly send Carnifex towards the, uh, towards, uh, the breakable wall and you can just ch keep chasing the survivor and the breakable wall will be uh, destroyed. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you can do that in advance. Yeah. That's why this killer requires a strategy. Yep. And uh, for example, you can even do it before you start picking up a survivor and to bring them to a hook. So instead of breaking, for example, a pallet, uh, you send Carnifex to break the pallet and you pick up the survivor and you hook the survivor. Uh, so Carnifex is actually a really good, uh, you know, a really good guard. Because you can also use him to break a, a generator. And then, yeah. yeah. So, so maybe, yeah. So basically, you can, yeah, you can gain some uh, map pressure, for example. Yeah. Yeah, and also maybe, bro. I think you can, uh, in part, counter pallet and the flashlight same. Correct. Maybe. 
because uh, if you put the guard they can uh, you know uh, they can hunt the you know the the flashlight user yep and you can uh, safely get the the down and survive correct you can yeah you can pick up him while the guard is hunting the flashlight user yeah yeah that's not a good uh, situation yeah that is uh, and that's uh, and that's just a con effects you know and, and so uh, the only thing with the guards is they don't apply uh, overcharge or call of brian so that's the only thing uh, yeah we tried it but uh, it yeah. doesn't work yeah, yeah it's so sad doesn't work it doesn't even work with its own uh, perk so yeah this uh quite something now uh the next uh, card is the assassin the assassin is like a lot it's it's the second it's uh, uh how should i say the carnifex carnifex is the the second best and assassin is the best well if you t depending on the role of course you know in uh if it goes about breaking uh, pallets or uh, breaking generators or walls, then Carnifex is the best. But if it is about chasing survivors, because if you use Carnifex to break a pallet, you will most likely have uh, the assassin ready next to uh, protect you when you are uh, hooking a survivor. If I'm correct. Yeah, remember that uh, he also applies the, the deep wound yeah. on the survivor. Yeah. So basically, the assassin is uh, very similar to Legion. Yeah. And and he's fast. He actually catches up to you, and so it is. Uh, with him, you get a lot more value with uh, the assassin if it goes about the uh, chase potential. But because of the fact how his how his power works. It doesn't do much, sadly. So yeah, even though the assassin is like the best one, he is like the second best one at the moment because of the nature of his power. Because when you are putting down the guard, the survivors will be al already gone from the loop. So yeah, good luck uh, getting people then with the, with the assassin. But if you, for example, break a pallet and you, and then before you start uh, picking up the survivor and you put down the assassin, then the assassin is is a great choice because he can uh, chase the, the the flashlight user assassin. So so both these both of these guards are extremely useful. Assassin and Carnifex. And I cannot say anything wrong with uh, with those two. And you? No, bro, yeah. I agree with you. Because... Those... The Carnifex ha has the most use in the game. Because he breaks pallets, he breaks generators... And such, so... Carnifex will always be useful. And... The assassin also. Assassin will be able to help you with downing survivors, if if you play it correctly. That is. But now we are going to, with the last one, and that is the jailer. And the jailer, yeah, how should I say it? The jailer is the weakest and the least useful of all. He is the most useless of the three cards. Because he does absolutely nothing. Because, yeah, he has uh, longer patrol, he can patrol longer, he has better detection. But it does not anything. The thing is, you need, you, need, you need something that can help you in the chase. You need something that can help you protect your generators. He is easily looped also. Because the survi one survivor just has to cast his egg, uh, his egg row and uh, the other survivors can just work on a generator. 
And he doesn't even damage the, the survivor. He doesn't even... Uh, you know, he does nothing. The jailer. I don't know what you think, bro, but the jailer is useless. Uh, it is, bro. <laughs> Basically, it is uh, just... Uh, a I think a garden with a longer, uh, yeah, basically a longer duration. Yeah. But uh, he has no special attack or uh, a special function, basically. Yeah. I mean, Carnifex brick pellets and he can brick generators. The assassin can bring apply brick, uh, deep wounds, which will give you more time to. Uh, to put pressure because the survivor has to remove the wound. But the jailer does nothing. He can't even catch up to the survivors. He can't. Uh, he's just easily looped. He's easily outplayed. And we had. How many times did we have to test uh, the jailer? Out of uh, the three. I think it, because we tested uh, Carnifex. We tested the assassin. Those two were great. And then we got uh, the jailer. And the jailer was like... Eh. He, the jailer did nothing? And I would think with the name as the jailer... I... I... I, I, I and... F and Falcon can, uh, can uh, confirm this for me. I said to Falcon, maybe... Maybe he can carry... Uh, people towards the hook. The jailer. Yeah, that could be a nice idea. Yeah, why not? So I don't fall. Uh, I don't Falcon, yeah. and we tried it. Nothing. He did nothing. <laughs> it's. Yeah. It, he. Yeah, yeah, you have no reason because okay, want uh, to. To break pallets, uh, you have a carnifex. You want to chase the survivors, you have the assassin. Yeah. So, so basically, jailer is no use. Oh no yeah. No practical I... use, I, I guess, bro. Hey, yeah. maybe, maybe hook camping. Yeah, bro. <laughs> they, I think they should give him something. Maybe increase, you know, the detection ability. Maybe you can. Uh, maybe you can leave the jailer uh, near. Uh, a generator or a hook, for example, and you get the killer instinct when uh, one survivor uh, comes near that generator or is going for the save, for example. Yeah, or make it even so that uh, if you have the if you have the jailer and you click on a hook that is near to you, then the jailer will pick up the survivor and he will bring the survivor to the hook. Yeah, also that yeah. that that would be nice. I mean, I mean. Keep keep in mind, everything is random right now because if you use Carnifex, you will get Assassin. If you get Assassin, you will get uh, Jailer. If you use Jailer, you will have Carnifex. You have no control over which uh, one of them that you have. Then at least make it so that uh, if you have uh, the Jailer and you have down the Survivor, let let it be like uh, that he can bring the Survivor towards the hook. You click on a hook and he will bring the Survivor towards that hook. You know, and that is then, and uh, and then the night itself. You as the killer, you can chase the the, the flashlight user and such. You know, just to keep aggression, make him make make him something like make it something like the cage of uh, pyramid head. Like uh, you click on the survivor on the ground, and the jailer will uh, they'll uh, come out of s nowhere and put the survivor with them towards an, some kind of location and put them in a cage there or on a hook you know on a random hook let 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 that be uh, something give him something it is it is nothing i mean and a lot and a lot of things that don't work so well with it also because if and that is something Falcon tested. Uh, if you are wounded and you grab the flag, then you get endurance. You basically get a free bar of time. Also, when you uh, and you get a speed boost when you when you grab the flag. It's this power is a mess, you know. What do you think, bro? Mm. 
you know bro I like the idea behind the scaler but uh, we need some buffs in my opinion yeah but so I yeah so basically uh, rework the jailer yeah and uh, maybe uh, decrease the reaction time of uh, the guardians uh, in general yeah. yeah what I would and also and the last one uh, which is the most important uh, in my opinion uh, give me the ability to select uh, which guardian uh, I need. Yep. That's e the most important uh, stuff. Uh, yeah. Even if it just yeah. means uh, he, he's uh, cooldown. Yeah. yeah, think about uh, Clown, bro. You yeah. can choose if you want to use uh, pink bottle or uh, yellow bottles, for example. Yeah, I want the same ability for this killer. I, I want, want to choose the. the the, if uh, I need the Carnifex, if I need the Assassin or the Jailer, when I want. Yeah, I agree. Even if it means that the, that the cooldown will be a bit longer for each one of them, that they all have a different cooldown. So if you use the Carnifex, yeah, he has a longer cooldown, but because you use them, but at least give us an option so that we can be like, okay, this uh, this is a good situation for the Assassin. Let's use the Assassin. Oh, we are now in a situation where we have to use Carnifex. Let us use Carnifex. Oh, oh, we hooked the survivor and he's, and he's killing himself on the hook. Let me summon the Jailer so that we can throw him. You know? Give us something like that. You know? Give us options. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Give yeah. us the option to choose. Let us, t let us be this big strategist. Let us be... This leader that, that tells his men to, you do this, you did that, you did so, you come here and we're gonna teabag the survivor. Let us give us that option. Yeah, exactly, bro. Because uh, right now uh, this killer is, uh, uh, he, he is not efficient, he's uh, complex to use. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, even with this complexity, it's uh, difficult, it's hard to get value. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. He has uh, all risk and no reward at the moment. That is what he is. He, it's it's like you go to a loop, you play you play a card and the survival go to the next area and you lose a lot of time again. You can't work with it. So yeah, now uh, let's uh, go to the perks, bro. Are you ready? Let's go. Because this power is a little bit frustrating. Good idea, poorly executed. Poorly executed. Nowhere to hide. The machinations of the weak and craven draw your ire. Your anger forces survivors to reveal themselves. Whenever you damage and generate the review the aura of all survivors standing within 24 meters of your position for 5 seconds. Out with you cowards, show yourselves. Tower Horse Kovax. This perk is good. It is bro. <laughs> for a couple of reasons. Because, uh, for example, uh, there is no cooldown. Yep. So you can use it as many times as you want. Yeah. The range is uh, pretty good. Yeah. 24 meters uh, are a lot. And uh, keep in mind, you can always increase uh, the duration with the little pursuer in combo. Correct. Yeah, this is just a really good perk. It is. Uh, it yeah. it works with it's most not, common use you know, perks. Yeah, yeah, especially if you. Uh, you get survivors which uh, keep touching your generator. Yep. I, to be honest, I, I, this is the best perk that he has. Yeah, true, bro. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And uh, you know, ca I can't wait to try this perk on my killers. Yeah. And also, especially on some killers, bro. Think about using uh, this perk on the nurse. Oh my God. Yeah, or if you are, especially if you are on a small map. 
Yeah, I can see this perk being uh, really good. You you apply overcharge and you apply uh, call brine. Now with the hide activate, you look around. Oh, someone is there. I'm gonna go there. You can stay aggressive. Yeah, and you can be efficient. Yeah. I cannot hate this perk. It's every, I have already said everything that I want to say about this perk. Do you have anything to add? And also, bro, I you know, I like also another thing of uh, this perk. Because uh, it requires no activation condition. This perk uh, is so natural for you to use. You just uh, kick generator. Yep. Which is a, a normal action for uh, for a killer. Yeah. Yeah, just to kick generators. Yeah, people would say it is a waste of time to kick a generator, but there were survivors oh, close not by. Anymore, no, not anymore, because remember, now there is a base kit regression when yeah. you kick a generator. Yeah, okay, it's only 2.5%, but uh, now you have it. Yeah. And on top of that, you still have other perks, uh, remember. Probably now the, the strongest combo is uh, Overcharge and the Call of O'Brien. Yeah. And then nowhere to hide? Yeah, that would be insane. Yep. Non-stop aggression, bro. Non-stop aggression. This is really a, the perk for the aggressive killers. Next one. Hex, face the darkness. You make an example of one of your victims, forcing the allies to become awed by your power. Injuring a survivor by any means, light a dull totem. Activates this perk and hexes that uh, survivor. While the hex is active, all other survivors outside your terror radius will scream intermediately. Inter yeah. And revealing their auras for two seconds. Each time, other survivors can also see the aura of the current survivor for eight seconds. When the survivor enters the dying state or become healthy, the hex totem becomes dull again and, the, and this perk deactivates. The perk is permanently disabled once its hex totem is cleansed. I also make an example of, of one. These mewling worms will never come will never know peace. Taros Kovac. Okay, the only thing that I like about this perk is the fact that once the survivor heals itself, the perk is dull again. So it will be so one time it will be active, then it will be deactive again. It's a uh, yeah, so basically it is more difficult to spot uh, yep. for the survivors, yeah. It's only it you are only able to spot it once uh, it is active. Yeah, exactly. And after that, it <laughs> it does nothing. I mean, if, if I think uh, when you are, there I think, uh, yeah, I think it is also bugged uh, in the yeah, in the PTB. But uh, anyway, you know the the effect uh, is not so strong because uh, first condition, the survivors uh, must be outside the terror range. Yep. So basically, this uh, this perk is useful only on the stealth killers. Yep. And uh, still, okay. I see one survivor screaming uh, on the other side of the map. What uh, should I do? I don't know, bro. It's uh... because uh, yeah, because you are uh, you are telling me to drop the the chase with the current survivor. Yep. Yeah, it is. I mean, let's be honest. You don't lose a totem. The totem will spawn at random spots. Yeah. But yeah. the conditions, it has to be outside of your terror radius. And you won't be able to use a perk like this with Wesker, <laughs> for example. Yeah, okay, so yeah, don't use this perk on Wesker, please. Yeah. Maybe Nurse. Maybe you will be able to use the nurse. You will definitely be able to use it with uh, with Sadako, with Ma with Tier One Myers, with uh, yeah, or uh, Ghostface, yeah, Ray Force, so yeah. 
Stealth killers, it's okay because you have uh, zero or uh, either a very small terror radius. Uh, but yeah. uh, the thing is, uh, okay, this uh, only information. And uh, yeah, so you must drop the chase. Uh, and uh, if you have no map control, you waste a lot of time because maybe the survivor could be already gone, bro. Yep. Remember, you only see the screen notification, and uh, yeah, our reading lasts only for two seconds. Yeah. And even with uh, little pursuit, it's not long. Yeah. So yeah, it is. Uh it's it's gimmicky yeah and remember that if you down the survivor uh, the perk deactivates so yeah and one side is good so <laughs> yeah, I don't know. you know bro impact the sprite is much better yeah well bro i see it like this you know imagine a survivor is trying to cleanse the totem or bless it you know and all of a sudden yeah. you down the survivor that is affected by it and then the survivor is cleansing a dull totem for nothing. So they didn't disable the perk, they just, uh, you know, they just have one less perk uh, to bless. It is just, yeah, it is, it's a mean perk. It's a much a Kote tier perk. I would leave it at that. Too many restrictions. Too, too many restrictions for weak perk. If it was perk, that are, if this perk was overpowered, I would understand why it has to be outside of the killer terror radius. But it isn't, you know. This this perk is just for the memes. That is all. Don't know what you think, but that is what I think. Can I say this, bro? Even if this perk wasn't uh, an X perk, it uh, would still be garbage. Yep. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah. It, uh, you know, this perk is not strong enough to be an X totem. Correct. That's the problem. <laughs> Correct. So. Yeah, just use uh, Infectious Spray. Yeah. So now the last one Hubris. You show no mercy, especially to those foolish enough to resist. Whenever you are stunned by a survivor, that survivor suffers from the exposed status effect for 20 seconds. Hubris has a cooldown of 20 seconds. You have made a grave mistake standing in opposition to me this day. Tarhorst Kovax. This perk has, uh, has uh, potential. Problem is, uh, 20 seconds is over really fast. You know? Yeah, and uh, remember, you still have to break the pallet. Yep. So, if you have to use this perk, then you have to use Spirit Fury, Enduring, yeah. and Brutal Strength. Yeah. Okay, you, you could do that, bro, but uh, you are wasting all your perk slots for uh, one effect, basically. Yeah, and the thing. And, uh, yeah, and also keep in mind that uh, once uh, the survivors know you have uh, this perk, they will pre drop every single pallet. Yes. Yes. H here's the thing, guys. You can go this build for them saying, you know? But. The thing is, don't use brutal strength. Just use uh, bamboo saw or something. Then at least you have still a perk that has value. But for example, yeah, they drop a pallet on you. As soon as they drop a pallet on you, they know that the hubris is there. So, and if they know that you that you have hu hubris, then they are like, oh, okay, he has spirit fury. Because. It's obvious. If you have this per, if this perks go off, they will, the survivor will be like, "Oh, he has spirit fury, and he has enduring." So yeah, then they will just pre-drop the pallet. 
I will, I will say, I will say it is not like that you will not get one of them, you know, because there will of course be a survivor that doesn't know that uh, you have that perk or uh, or they didn't expect you to, uh, or they dropped the pellet on you and then all of a sudden uh, the pellet breaks and you uh, down them. But as soon as the survivor knows, oh, he has hubris, uh, time to pre-drop the pellets. Because uh, 20 seconds is short for a chase. It's really short. And survivors will not uh, give you that chance to uh, use their, uh, that perk. It is a good perk, but it has to be a bit longer. Like 30 or 40 seconds. I think that if it was 30 or 40 seconds, that would be good. But even then, survivors will pre-drop. Right? Yeah, exactly. You know, bro, I think uh, this park uh, is the same problem as uh, like this solution. Yeah. Yeah, so on paper, it's good. Yeah. Not only on, pa on the paper, <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, play, I, I played some games with uh, this solution and uh, I only have like uh, two or three times value from it. At the most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I think probably in a top level game, maybe you will use this perk once. Yeah. Yeah, I think only once in uh, yeah, against the top level survivors. Yeah, and now once they know it, they will be like, okay, guys, he has hubris, uh, just pre drop everything. And be a greedy as fuck. Because you don't have anything else. You don't have any other perk to help you uh, stop generators. You don't have any other perk uh, to help you in the chase. Maybe bamboozle. You basically play with one perk then. Only one perk and the other perks don't, don't exist anymore. <laughs> so you, lo so you, uh, you, so you uh, sacrifice like three perk slots. For a gimmick, at the end of the day. Fun. What do you think? What do you think, bro? You know, uh, this kid has only one good perk, bro. Yep. Yeah, which is the first one. Yeah. Then maybe this is the second best. Yeah. And uh, face darkness is the worst. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know, I think they should buff uh, yeah, at least two packs. Yeah. Yeah. The first one is okay. It's uh, nice, cool, and uh, probably I will experiment with it uh, once the chapter uh, releases. The first one is perfect. Yeah, but uh, yeah, this one is uh, a yeah. small situation. Yeah, bro, it's like this solution. Yep. Maybe somebody will try it uh, just for fun the first days of the chapter, uh, but uh, yeah. you will never see Hobris uh, anymore, uh, you know, maybe after the first week. Yeah. Yeah, that is what it is. So I think we have uh, gone with all the perks, so uh, just, to, just to say to you guys, uh, just to rank each of the perks, uh, this is number one. Number two, Machu Kote. Yes. So, yeah. Ignore this perk. Don't expect too much from this perk. But, trust in this perk. This perk is great. Anyway. Yeah, it is, bro, because it is easy to use. Yeah. Yeah, because it's. Uh, a natural action for the killer, you know, just uh, kicking the generators, no more and uh, it's reliable. Yeah, just yeah. No Th that's, uh, that's the most important point, though. It's yeah. reliable. I agree. I agree. Yeah. The other, uh, the other perks are not reliable. That's the problem. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the only thing that is left to say is, uh, guys, uh, we are done with the skill power review and the perk review. 
the next uh, part is the perk build suggestions, which is Falcon's favorite part, of course. Yeah, of course. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna say bye for now and see you at the perk build suggestion part of the video. Bye!